वेलकम लेट्स टॉक अबाउट वन ऑफ द वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग कॉन्सेप्ट एंड दैट इज द यरकी जॉनसन लॉ नाउ दिस लॉ इज स्पेसिफिकली डिरेक्टेड टू अंडरस्टैंड द राइट अमाउंट ऑफ प्रोडक्टिविटी विद द राइट अमाउंट ऑफ स्ट्रेस दैट हैज बीन गिवन सो इट इज बिलीव दैट विद द मॉडरेट अमाउंट ऑफ स्ट्रेस दैट इज गिवन यू हैव द बेस्ट परफॉर्मेंस और द बेस्ट रिजल्ट दैट आर सीन If it is on either side of the extremes, the results get disoriented. So this works in a kind of inverted U theory, or we could say a normal probability curve that it works on. And this was given by Yerkes and Dodson, the two psychologists based on which you have the law, which is known as Yerkes-Dodson law, invented in nineteen o eight. Now this theory initially talks about. a motivation for the rats to escape out of a maze so if there was too much of the pressure that was given or too much of the stress that was given only well directed or very confident ones could perform well but when there was moderate amount of pressure that was given the optimum or the best performance was seen so in this curve if we look very very closely we can understand that with higher amount of stress that has been given the performance starts to reduce and similarly when you have less of a stress level it becomes a boredom or there is lot of fatigue or laziness that comes in lack of arousal which again is one of the reasons for declined performance that is seen so peak performance is seen with moderate levels of stress that is seen now as and as the stress increases you have the situation of panic anxiety and might be burnout that occurs however when you have very less level of strain, uh, stress or uh, arousal that is seen there is less motivation that is seen and inactivity or uh, boredom gets into play so it's on either side of the curve there is negativity as you move towards the moderate amount you have the best results that are seen now this has been further explained with people working with difficult task or easy task so usually with easy task you have higher anxiety even under higher anxiety you could perform easy task easily but for difficult task it is usually lower level of anxiety that leads to better performance result so four indicators or four influences which are there that affect this law those are the level of skill now whenever you have a new skill which is challenging if you feel it is very very easy your performance would not be up to the mark and when you have an extra pressure that is applied to it might be the performance starts to decline similarly you have personality traits it's believed that introverts perform better with less pressure however those people who are extrovert outgoing perform well with higher amount of stress that is there the next interesting characteristic is trait anxiety when we say trait anxiety people who are self confident perform better when they are under pressure so they have a tendency to do self talk to allow a kind of inflow of thoughts that could occur so self confident people usually perform better under pressure as compared to the people who are less self confident who basically tend to perform well under low pressure okay the next is the complexity of the task what actually happens is this is a kind of very tricky or a critical question we could say people with who are performing very simple activities require higher pressure levels but those who are performing challenging or difficult task require a calm and less pressure of environment as we can see in this diagram so if the task is easy even if the pressure is high people can perform well but if the task uh, task is very very challenging you have to make the platform or the stress level should be released for those so the best way in a workplace or a work environment to improve the quality of the work is to pressure off the 
work situations and when you have moderately pressured work, work situations that are seen optimum or the best performances could be achieved so that is about the yerkes dodson law a very very important law this is also known as a inverted u theory and has been very very applicable mainly in organizational psychology and industrial psychology have a wonderful day ahead we'll be coming up with many more interesting topics in psychology